Hello everyone, welcome to today's live stream bringing you by China Plus and CRI Learn Chinese. This is Feng Yue and I'm joined by Una and Niu Niu behind the camera. Also saying hello to all of you, our dear audience from all of our four Facebook pages, namely China Plus America, China Plus News, China Plus South Africa and CRI Learn Chinese. If you followed our Facebook pages, you might have already known that we are spending our month long journey here in Xinjiang in northwestern part of China and we've show you via live streaming to Cocteau K, uh, from Cocteau K to Canada's uh, nat Natural Reserve, from uh, Uyghur dances to Kazakh herdsmen. And today, this is a brand new place called Kucha or Kucha in Mandarin. This is a place has uh, thousands of years of history. And as you can see, there are so many beautiful ladies and handsome guys behind me. And they're going to show us very um, ancient and Elegant and beautiful dances. So let's check it out. So as you can see, they are all dressed in different uh, feature, uh, different characteristics, uh, costumes, and they're really colorful and beautiful. So they're trying to look for a music that's suitable for their dance. And st so stay tuned. And we will show you the ancient Qiuzi dance very soon. And actually, when speaking of traveling in Xinjiang, many people will think about how to So they will start dancing for us. Let's uh, stay tuned and enjoy their beautiful dance. Kucha is actually a bright pearl on the ancient Silk Road, the birthplace of Kucha culture. So we're doing this live stream simultaneously on China Plus America, China Plus South Africa, China Plus News, as well as CRI Learn Chinese. If you have any questions or comments, please do not hesitate to leave it to us on the comment section on our Facebook pages. I can see your comments immediately and I will shout it out for you. Alright, we have a lot of uh, friends with us today. What we are looking at right now is actually an ancient dance called Chosu dance here in Kucha, a small but tranquil city that has thousands of years of history. Also known as the capital of music in the region and the hometown of singing and dancing and the hometown of white, epic culture in China. It has rich, intangible cultural heritage. 
what it is is a texture of music and dance and musical instruments and folk costumes, traditional crafts and their products. You can find all of them here in this city. as well as CRI Learn Chinese. But if you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to leave us as many comments as possible. Alright, thank you! Okay, thank you. Do you want to learn? So do you want me to learn from them? If you do, leave us as many comments as possible. So I'm going to learn a little bit moves from this performers here. Hello, So her name is Ai Noor and So she's of the Uyghur ethnic minority group here in Kucha. So she's been learning the dance for 15 years. So do you want me to learn from her? If you do, do not hesitate to leave us as many comments as possible. So this gesture, this gesture is actually one of the most representative gestures uh, in Chozi dance. So if you want to learn some moves from the Chozi dance, you should definitely remember this gesture. The second one is like this. I think this is a little bit from the Buddhism culture. So you can uh you can actually uh perform the chose dance with or without shoes. Na So do you remember these two gestures? So all right, let me uh, check your comments. What do you think of the dance they just performed for us? Okay. All right, so I'm back. Let me. What do you think of the dance they just performed for us? And I also learned a little bit from them i think that needs a lot of years of practice so that you can do uh as as well as uh, they did well we have all right i know this is not the really the time we do live streams and we know to some of our audience it might be midnight to you but thank you all for coming for for tuning in and uh, we are now we are now in Kucha, another very beautiful place here in Xinjiang. And all right, we have Jesse says quite beautiful dancing. And uh, so today we are going to show you the Tianshan uh, mysterious Grand Canyon. And as you can take a look from the camera, there were. So many high rufous massifs. So actually ancient culture was an ancient kingdom that's of great significant uh, historical significance. It's a small oasis 
estate situated along the Silk Road. So when you when speaking of traveling in Xinjiang, you might think of uh, Ili or Urumqi or Kashgar, but there are definitely some smaller cities or counties or towns that also worth visiting and Kocha is one of them. If you are a Silk Road history lover or if you are a, an ethnic minority culture lover, this is definitely the place for you. And today we're going to show you the Tian Shan Mysterious uh, Grand Canyon. Yes, that's the name. Because here in Xinjiang, we have a lot of Grand Canyons here. And this one is the only one with the uh, adjective mysterious. Why is that? We will find it out later. And here, as you can see, there were so many such kind of uh, uh, stones in weird shape. Do you know what is this for? Do you know what is this for? If you know, then tell me in the comment area. Actually, I think this is kind of like a mixture of uh, Tibetan culture and Xinjiang culture here. Uh, if you travel to Tibet Autonomous uh, Region, you will find a lot of uh, uh, such kind of scenery because people believe if people believe if you put if you pile up all these stones together, it's a ritual to pray for good fortune. So I think I'll do it myself to pray for the good fortune. Uh, let me try to pick out some stones maybe I think they should be in different shapes like uh, this one is the biggest one uh, and the second one is in medium size and the smaller one like this oh. shall I put it here Ooh. so you, you should do it re very carefully so that this can make your wish come true. Okay, and the last one here. So here are the three of my stones. All right, let's keep moving because we have a very, very huge valley to explore today. And this canyon actually is also called Kuzlia Valley. Kuzlia is actually a uh, weaver language. It means red. Uh, red rocks or red cliffs. So as you can see the massifs here is Rufus, the brownish red. It's also one of the landforms that we've already witnessed in uh, in Karame. It's Uerhe or Orku. It's Yardan uh, landform as well. So you can see the rock. They are uh, red or you can see Rufus. And if it's a sunny day, you will witness all the rocks like burning flames uh, from a far uh, perspective. Una, why don't you just... <laughs> it's too dangerous. <laughs> all right. So uh, uh, we were uh, in... Oh, the, the, the city we are in today is actually called Kucha. It's Kucha or Kucha in Mandarin. It's an ancient kingdom uh, and it was a crossroads of the great cultures of India, Persia, Thrace, Greece, and China in ancient times. And uh, the history of this town, Kucha, can be traced back to the Han Dynasty. And according to the Book of Han, Kucha was the largest of the 36 kingdoms of the Western region at that time. It has a population of over 80,000 with over 20,000 persons able to bear arms. So you can tell from the history that this ancient country, uh, this ancient kingdom at that time was really uh, a large one. And from for a long time, it was the most populous oasis in the Tarim Basin. And uh, y yesterday, if you watched our live stream that Nyo Nyo did in Bainbulog grassland, you would know that she told you a little bit about the story of the journey to the West. It's one of the four great classical Chinese literature. And uh, Nyo Nyo told you that in the journey to the West, uh, Sanzang or Xuanzang, the monk, 
as well as his apprentices, they actually uh, came to Bainbrook grassland. And here in Kucha, some experts say they also came here. And if you know a little bit about this no novel, you will know once they pass by a kingdom of women. That's a, uh, shall we say that's a queendom? <laughs> because in that kingdom, all the citizens are women, and they come, they came into this kingdom accidentally, and they find they found that the queen of the kingdom is really, really elegant and beautiful, and the queen immediately fall, falls in love with Sanzang or Xuanzang, the monk, and she plans to marry him. So guess what? Guess what? How can all the how can the all the women in the kingdom without men get uh give uh, give birth to their child? There is a river called Simu River here in Kucha, and that's why people guess that this place is the kingdom of uh, women exists because there's also a river over that over there, I believe, called Simu River. And the river has a, has a magic. If the citizens of that kingdom drink the water from the Zimu River, then they will get pregnant and they will give birth to a girl in three days. See, that's a little bit interesting, but but that exists in the novel. So, and uh, you know, uh, but a uh, tongue. Sanzang or Xuanzang, the monk, he has his own mission. He wants to, he has to go to the so-called western area, western region to obtain the uh, Buddhist sacred text. So he decided to stay true to his mission and he refuses, he refused the queen's offer and continued his journey. So what, it's kind of a, a bittersweet, uh, sad, uh, romantic story. Although the kingdom of women is something existing in the fiction, some experts say the place of the kingdom is actually here in Kucha. So what do you think of this story? And uh, here, as you can see, we have to climb this. So be careful, let Una go first. Okay. All right, really? Okay, yes. So this is also the way we want to appreciate the beautiful scenery. So you have to go through all these rows of uh, hardship, and then you can appreciate the beautiful scenery in the world. This is a little bit hard. Uh, So uh, the Kucha Township in nowadays has about around 600,000 populations, so mostly in Uyghur ethnic group and Han group. So now it is an okay. So it is an important industrial and agricultural area for the region. <sighs> A little bit too high. not easy for you to appreciate the most beautiful scenery in the world. You have to go through all the difficulties, all the hardships. <sighs> all right, but now we have the <laughs> we have the road in front of us. So let's uh, take a look at all the uh, beautiful sceneries of the canyon. <sighs> and just now we said that 
culture has a long history that can be dates back to the Han Dynasty. Oh, so uh, can anyone guess what this is? What this is? It's not actually a bucket or something. It's a well. It's a well, and actually, it's a wishing well. In, instead of throwing a coin into the wishing pool, you actually throw a stone uh, on the top of that well. If your stone stands still on the top of the well, then your wishes will come true. So, I'll do this. I'll, I'll also uh, throw a stone to the top of the well. I think this is a little bit too large, maybe. What is your wish? Uh, let far me think. Away. Trust me, too far away. Too far oh, away. too far away. All right, get closer. Uh, it's too sunny that I cannot open my eyes. So, what, what, what should I? Mm, wish all of you healthy. No, wish all of you healthy and happy. Oh. <laughs> then if if my stone doesn't stand still, all right, let's ch change change your wish then. Uh, wish Una uh, be a billionaire. Okay. How's that? Will this wish come true? <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll do it again. I'll do it again. I'll do it. Again. I, okay. I think. This way is better. Go! <laughs> I'm so sorry. Maybe, uh, maybe next time. I don't know. I'm not good at this. I will never be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me, let me, let's check your comments here. Um. Okay, we have um, Jesse Horn, ni hao, Jesse, ni hao, and uh, Glenda. Hello, Glenda. And Kenny says, Good evening, good evening, or should I say, Good afternoon from Xinjiang. Good evening to you. And uh, Nick says, Hello, hello, Nick, how are you? And uh, uh, we have a lot of friends joining. Tuning in this live stream, there are Alberto, Alberto and uh, Nazare, and uh, Abid, and Randy, Robert, and Nailing, and uh, George, and Nimai, and Scott. And Adriana, hello to all of you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we are now in Kucha, a very, uh, a very beautiful and small town here in Xinjiang. It has a long history that can be traced back to the Han Dynasty. And just now, in the beginning of our live stream, you have enjoyed the ancient and famous Qiuzi dancing. Oh, if our, if you are from CRI Learn Chinese page, you might found you you might feel the two Chinese characters for Qiuzi kind of weird because uh, really it uh, the two were uh, the two characters. Or uh, can be pronounced as Gui and Zi, but no worries. For many Chinese people, they cannot do it in the right way. So it should be the right way to pronounce the two characters is Qiuzi. So Qiuzi is the ancient name of Kucha, the place here. And George says, super beautiful. Yes, it is. This is a super beautiful place here in Xinjiang, in Kucha, the canyon. It's called Tianshan Mysterious Grand Canyon, and actually, it is the only canyon in Xinjiang that can be described with the adjective mysterious. Why is that? And we will go deep inside to find out the answer. And we have Larry and Allison, and Ronnie, and Lan Ching Singh, and George T, and Running Bears. And Jason, <laughs> join us. Jason said, "LOL, at least you tried." Yes, yes. You know, it's not a, it's a, 
it's an opportunity for us to come here because you know for people like for people like me who lives uh, in the inland area of China especially uh, my hometown is located in the eastern part of China and in my hometown there are not that there are not many people of uh, ethnic minority groups so I can hardly meet people love uh, different ethnic minority minority groups so I think I do cherish this chance to learn from them to talk with them to learn a little bit of their culture their dance their songs and maybe their cuisine in the future in our trip so stay tuned we will try their delicacies uh, in the coming days of our trip and Eddie says hello hello Eddie how are you and uh, we're in oh, oh so, so as you can see it should be really oh we're in the wrong way as you can see if you would not be careful yeah. uh, so if you come to visit this place you should be really careful and you shouldn't do things like us doing a live stream talking while walking because you have to watch the steps all the way here and try and make sure that you wear comfortable shoes <laughs> and I think actually this is a good period of time for us to enjoy the view of this canyon because uh, perhaps in a very uh, short period of time it, it will be the sunset here in the valley and that scenery will be super magnificent okay we have Rounding Bear says good morning from Las Vegas. Good morning and good afternoon from Xinjiang. Oh, and uh, Maureen Mary says hello, hello Maureen. And uh, hello Isel. Hello Rupesh. And George says thank you very much for the live stream. Can't wait to visit in person. It's welcome, welcome to visit Xinjiang. This is a huge huge region that covers the near covers one sixth of china's total land area and here you can find all the amazing things from natural landscape to ethnic minority culture from food to singing and dancing all of these things are amazing and we are joined by Shokaf, Ali Khan, and Nai Tirini, and uh, Jupali, and Matthew Hopkins is also watching us. And uh, um, Don Van says, You need to sit down and take a little break. Thank you very much. But you know, we do have a long way to show you, we do have a lot of sinners to show you. So uh, I'm okay, but thank you for. Uh, thank you for asking and uh, Kenny says please watch your step thank you yes and that's also the little tip or little suggestion to all of you who may visit this place in the future watch your step and you shouldn't do things like us like walking while talking and uh, wear comfortable shoes and perhaps get your uh, sun cream some umbrella and hat and bottles of water that's really necessary and mm, Jesse also says all of you warmly watch your steps thank you thank you very much and running running bears says beautiful place yes so if you live in the United States do you think this scenery is similar to somewhere in the US take a look Do you think this place is quite a little bit similar to the Antelope ca Canyon in the US? So this place is called Tian Shan Mysterious Grand Canyon and it's standing 1,600 meters above sea level with its highest peak reaching 2,048 meters and the canyon is made up of ranges of roofless massifs and it is also called 
Kozlia Grand Canyon or Kozlia Valley, which means red cliff in Uyghur language. In the sunlight, you will see the Rufus Mountains are burning flames seen from afar. And uh, you know what makes this Tian Shan mysterious uh, Grand Canyon so charming? It's not only about its magnificence, it's also about its tranquility, tranquility and mysteriousness. So uh, here, oh, it's already, uh, okay. All right, uh, Kenny asked how big are the walks around this canyon? How big? I, I, I don't get the t exact number of uh, how how large this whole area is, but we know that this is about the highest peak of the canyon is over uh, 2,000 meters and it's, it's, it stands 1,600 meters above sea level. You see, this is one of the things I'll call it mysterious. You can see the springs or the brook uh, uh, flowing over there, but right here it disappears. Why is that? Why is that? And I was told that you can actually witness the spring or the brook all year round in the valley. Some say it's the melting water from the snow mountains, but we're not sure. Who knows? So that's one of the mysterious things in the canyon. And the moment you look up, you will feel a little bit dizzy and stifled with the mountains that will fall onto ground at any time. And that's why they have a lot of uh, safety islands, the so-called safety islands inside the canyon, just in case there might be torrential floods in summer. You know, canyon here change as mountains change. Sometimes the space in between is narrow and sometimes it's wide. And in this canyon, the widest place is about uh, 53 meters and the narrowest is only 0 0.4 meters. Okay. Okay, another brook. <laughs> Okay. Oh, Jason says, I'm curious, what is the temperature where you are now? What is the temperature? Let me check right now. I can check through the app I've installed on my phone. What's the temperature? All right, it says it's, it says it's 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, 25 degrees Celsius, but if you stand under the sun, it's way much hotter than 25 degrees Celsius, I think. But if you get into the canyon, it's cooler and it's comfortable. All right, and uh, Martin says, hello. Hello, Martin, how are you? And yes, Maureen says, Louisiana, USA here. Loving this, so interesting. Such a charming tour guide. Thank you. And, uh, George, George says, I got midterms, lol, got to make sure I pass my class to reward myself with the baddest trip over there. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see your streams with local uh, group and more music and dances. Yes, we do have a lot of uh, uh, we do have a lot of uh, amazing things to share with you through our live streams, uh, music, dances, uh, food, natural landscape, ethnic minority culture, 
all the way from northern part of Xinjiang to southern part of Xinjiang. And if you've followed our live streams, you will know that we started in Cocteau K, where Niu Niu did a, a live stream showing you the mine pit of that place. And then we went to Kana's Nature Reserve, where you can find the wonder, wonderful place with the most beautiful lake, I would like to say, in the world. Or some of you might not agree with me, but I think that's the most be beautiful lake I've ever been to. And no, we should go in this way. This way. So just now, as we mentioned, that there's a, this kind of a brook in this canyon which we don't know where it comes from. And over at the entrance of the valley, we can see this spring or the brook just disappears. And uh, perhaps, perhaps it's been absorbed by the sand here, but we don't really know the reason why it disappears. And you can see the canyon look up. When you look up, it's a little bit dizzy. Not sure whether you can tell the color of the cliff via camera, but it's actually uh, rufous, it's red, it's brownish red, and the color changes as the sunlight changes. All right, we are doing this live stream on four uh, four, four of our Facebook pages, namely China Plus America, China Plus South Africa, China Plus News, and CRI Learn Chinese. So now let me check some comments from our Learn Chinese page. And if you are the follower, if you are the followers of our Learn Chinese page, you might find this place a little bit weird, especially when you see the Chinese Hanzi or Chinese characters for this place, its ancient name is Qiuzi. When you firstly uh, looked at this, uh, the name of this place, you will find it's not the way you usually think, because in Chinese, usually the two characters should be pronounced as Gui and Zi, but it's actually not. Here, this place should be pronounced as Qiuzi. All right. Let me check some comments from our Learn Chinese page. All right, we have a lot of friends here. Uh, mm. Okay, we have, uh, oh, Tina says, thank you. Thank you, Tina, for tuning in, xiexie. And Bio Lisu says, oh, amazing place. Yes, this is definitely an amazing place here in Xinjiang. And here, this is the Grand Tianshan Mysterious Grand Canyon in Kucha. And you can find why it's mysterious here, right in this spot. Or maybe we can get a little bit backward. So the mysteriousness of the Tianshan Mysterious Grand Canyon are, first of all, it's mist and sound. You know, standing at the foot of the thousand, because there's a thousand Buddha grotto, grotto or Qianlong pool, you can always find mysterious mist rising from the bottom, whether at dawn or at night. And the mist will sometimes assemble together to form a ball and ascend along the cliff before disappearing. And on the hanging ladder or flights of steps, uh, of the steps of Thousand Buddha Grotto, even in the taverns of the canyon, you can hear footsteps. You can hear footsteps or tap tap at the door. But in fact, no sound or people are audible or visible. So now, can you see the cave over there? Can you see the cave over there? That's actually another 
mysteriousness of this canyon. So So this hole is actually the cave is actually called Lingguang Hole or Lingguang Cave. It lies at the halfway mountain next to the lining hump. You can looking upward from the sightseeing stand, which is here. Oh now let's get out here. So just look closely to that cave over there. Can you find a fairy with silver dress in the cave dancing? Can you find that? Can you find a fairy with silver dress in the cave dancing elegantly? I can see that. We can all see that with our eyes, but we're not sure whether you can see that through the camera. There is a fairy with silver dress, with white dress dancing inside the cave. Not sure whether you can see that through the camera. If you can, please let us know uh, in the common area. Because surprisingly, when we first come here like half an hour ago, we couldn't see that clearly. But now we can actually see that. Right over there. A fairy wearing silver dress dancing in that cave. That's a little bit scary, I would like to say. <laughs> you know, surprisingly, if you uh, walk three meters close, the image of the fairy will no longer be visible. So you should find a special, specific place to uh, take a look at this kind of scene. And the reason may be the joint effect of light and shadow, right? I think we can see that through the camera. Let me yes. check, let me check uh, whether you can see that through our camera. Let me check your comments. You know, that's a little bit scary to me. Mm, if you come here alone, that's a little bit horrible. Uh, Canyon says Niu Niu is having a relaxing time through the canyon. Yes, she is actually taking some nice pictures over there. And perhaps she's going to teach you some Chinese. So stay tuned and follow our CRI Learn Chinese Facebook page to see to check out what Niu Niu is going to teach you. And um, Jason says, wow, wow, that scene is uh, unbelievable. Oh, Kenny asked, does this canyon fill up with water during the winter period? I think it, this place, this canyon actually will be filled up with uh, waters from time to time in summer. And that's why they have a lot of uh, safety islands. They call it safety islands here for the visitors. If they uh, accidentally encounter the torrential floods in summer, then they can stay in the safety island and to keep themselves safe. And Jesse Horn says, breathtaking, rugged beauty all around you, amazing women. Thank you, Jesse. And Jesse says, yes, I see the cave, the fairy. Kenny says, yes, everybody is, everybody is saying that there is a fairy dressed in a uh, silver. Here, yes, so the visitors are also trying to take a look at the fairy dressed in uh, silver. And Kenny says, wonder if, wonder there if there's any mountain goats living in the cave. In that cave, you mean in that cave? Oh, we don't know. You know, at this moment, I wish I could be one of the characters in those Wuxia novels so that I can fly into that cave and to check it out by myself. And uh, Jessie says Niu Niu is an amazing Mandarin teacher indeed. Yes, she is. And actually, in addition to that fairy cave, let's call it fairy cave, there is also another cave over there. Over there, white, that one, that one. 
Oh, yes, yes, this one. This one. Can you witness that cave? And it's actually called treasure bearing, treasure bearing hole. You know, when Genghis Khan fought war with the、uh, region, the kingdom of Chiu Si fled with his own fortunes of the king, hidden themselves in this large valley and kept their money and treasure in this hole. You know, everybody's talking about the fairy in that cave. Everybody's talking about the fairy in that cave, and you know the treasure was not discovered. Yes, Jesse says I see the other cave. Yes, over there, that one, that one, that one. Yes. No, the in the ancient time, the king of the kingdom of Chosu hid their treasure. In that cave, and the treasure was not discovered until 1960s, when two brothers took it away and left nothing but wooden staircases beneath the entrance of the hole. So later, though flows of people coming to seek for treasure found no more holes bearing treasure. All right, let's go. Oh, there's another side over here. Take a look over there. Can you see that cliff? Can you see that cliff? That's another mysterious phenomenon in this canyon. That's also one of the、uh, one of the many、uh, phenomenon that makes this canyon mysterious. You know, the peak of that、uh, cliff actually turns its direction every year. Is 每年还是每天呀？每年，每年 ，All right. It turns its direction every year. Alright, let's keep going. You see, you see. Alright, so just now we've already uncovered the mysteriousness of this canyon for you. One of the mysteriousness is the cave over there. There is a fairy、uh, in silver dress dancing inside, but you cannot actually witness the scenery every time you come here. It's only it only can be witnessed when the light and shadow is suitable for this scene. So we are very lucky. We're very fortunate to witness. The fairy over there, and the other one we just introduced is about the sound in this canyon. You know, in some valley, in some under some rocks, you can actually hear the、uh, steps or knock, knock, tap, tap at the door. But if you come closer, you will see no one is there, and no people or no sound can be audible or、uh, recorded, and. Also, you know, close to the entrance of the canyon, there is a protruding black cliff which resembles a dog, which we have already missed this time, but we can actually find that later. You know, there is a protruding black cliff resembling a dog, so its name is Sacred Dog Garden Canyon. You know, the gen generally the dog is black, but when it comes to July or August. The dog will turn tawny, or let's say brownish yellow, and in spite of the changing color, the shape of the dog remains the same. So, what is extraordinary is that it is the dog when seen from afar. It's actually just a cliff. All right. The tourist guide is actually introducing that to where you can take a breathtaking picture of this canyon. She says we can keep walking for about 50 meters and then look back upon your shoulder. You will get an amazing picture of this canyon. Like this. Like this. Let's see. Yeah. But I think through the camera we cannot see the、uh, red, the reddish. Or the roof is a thick canyon. It's kind of yellow through the camera.
Yeah, Candy says mystery of the world. Yes, mystery. I think that's the effect of the light and shadow. But if you want to believe that's the mystery or that's the fairy, uh, that's also very cool. Because we do have another, th there are a lot of uh, such scene spots inside this canyon. So some of them you will find them uh, mysterious, some you will find them interesting, some you will find, huh, it's just so so. It's okay. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the common thing in any tourist destinations in the world. I would like to say, and uh, uh, Jason says gotta go. But Shisha for sharing the beauty of this part of the world with me. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Jason, for tuning in. You too. Have a great day. And uh, mm, we do have a lot of uh, uh, live streams along our trip here in Xinjiang today and every day so if you all right welcome back uh, sorry for the bad signal because we are deep in the canyon and there might be some breaks of the signals so here is uh maybe the last uh, uh tourist attractions last tourist uh scenic spots i would like to introduce to you this spring let's let's take a look here this spring is actually, if we translate it in a direct way, it's called Jade Girl Spring. But I would like also call it Fairy Spring because if, can you hear the sound of the water inside? Okay. And actually, you know, in the depth of the canyon, on the top of the eight meter tall, this cave, eight meter tall and four meter wide hole, the spring is dripping throughout the year, all year round. In winter, the water freezes, so forming a huge freestyle icicle, which weighs about 500 kilograms. And every year when it comes to spring, uh, perhaps in March and April, the icicle melts like a graceful girl. That's how the description says. But the, the, the phenomenon is that if you describe that as a, a girl melt, uh, the icicle melting like an elegant, like a graceful girl, that's a little bit weird, weird. But just imagine the picture that happens in spring. The icicle weighs about 500 kilograms melting. And the spring actually, the, the, the spring actually dripping all year round in the canyon. And just now we've uh, actually told you a little bit about the mysteriousness of this canyon. The first one is the cave over there. And then uh, the sound, the footsteps or the tap tap at the door. And then this cave here with, uh, with water dripping ev uh, every day in the year. And also actually, here you can feel the wind in the canyon when you can, when you go out to the canyon and you can feel it's really hot under the sun but if once you get into the canyon it's really cool it's really comfortable that's because of a quite a few brooks in the canyon you just witnessed and there is a little sunshine through the canyon and you can see this is a deep canyon but also because of an intermittent gust of wind from different directions so that's also one of the mysteriousness in this canyon all right so during the dry season you know beneath the first of fall within the canyon there's water flowing along the bottom of the canyon if you step your foot in the water the water will move back forward 
if you stop its way with your hand like this, the water will move downward. So that's another mysteriousness of in this canyon. So if you can come here, you can try this by yourself. And uh, before we end our live stream today, let me finally let me finally check your comments on our Facebook pages. We're doing this on China Plus America, China Plus South Africa, China Plus News, and CRI Learn Chinese. I'm going to check your comments here on China Plus on CRI Learn Chinese. And Mohammed says hi, hello Mohammed, how are you today? And uh, our colleague is also trying to. Oh, Mohammed says how to say in Chinese water fountains. That's pen quan, pen quan in Mandarin in Chinese. And um, our colleague is also trying to teach you some uh, words in the common area: dog, 狗 and trip, 旅行 spring, 泉水泉 and spring also means 春天 and.、Uh, Mar says hi from Philippines, watching here in Taiwan. Hello, Mar. How are you today? And we are here in Xinjiang, and this place, very beautiful place, is called Tianshan Mysterious Grand Canyon. It's located in Kucha, and、uh, Kucha is actually a very beautiful small town, tranquil. It's not really, it's not very similar to、uh, big cities like Urumqi or Kashgar or Haltan. So, if you want, to, if you are a history lover, if you love to explore some. Silk Road charm. You should definitely come to this city. And just now, we've showed you the. I think one of the most attractive spots we've we've visited today is that the cave. I personally love that the most because of the fairy with silver dress dancing inside. I think because when we came here to check the point, like. Uh, half an hour ago, we didn't see that, but this time it's quite. But but this time we are quite fortunate to witness that scenery, and that's really amazing. And running bear, oh, Gany says,、uh, the marks on the rocks are down by water. Yes, of course. Yes, the marks, the rocks,、uh, the marks on the rocks are down by water. And.、Uh, Running, running bear says amazing formation of the canyon walls. <laughs> Kenny says, "Do you remember we just said one of the mysteriousness of, is about the sound of the footstep and knock knock or tap tap at the door." And Kenny says, "The knock from the rocks is that someone wants to tell a jo joke behind." <laughs> That's hilarious, and I agree. And. Kenny says, "How do you get to this canyon? How do you get to this canyon? You mean to this、uh, place or into this place? So if you want to have a sightseeing into this canyon, you should just walk, take a walk. And if you want to travel to this town named Kucha, you can actually take a car, rent a car. You can go through the road named Du Ku Road Expressway, and that's praised as the most beautiful highway or expressway in China." All right, and、uh, Maureen says,、uh, "Thank you. I've enjoyed this so much. We'll be googling to get more info. Yes, if you want to learn more about this Tianshan Mysterious Grand Canyon, go to check it on the internet." And all right, so I guess that's almost the end of today's live stream. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you so much for spending time with us today. We are on our Uh, trip in Xinjiang. We will spend about 30 days in this amazing region that covers one sixth of the total land area in China. And、uh, we do have some more interesting things to share with you through our live stream. So stay tuned. See you next time. Bye bye.